Today we have another extremely illustrious uh, visitor and uh, guest on Zena World, Heart to Heart Connection, Mr. Yeah. Jayant Roy Chaudhary. He has it all in journalism. And uh, he's been in Delhi throughout uh, his life. He began his schooling with the Frank Anthony Public School, which was a prestigious school in Delhi. And people would get a, give an arm and a leg to get seek admission into that school. Frank Anthony, St. Columbus, St. Xavier's were the thing. Then he went on to, after school, he went on to study in uh, Hansard College, economics in Hansard College. And then he went to Shevling Fellowship, uh, uh, Economics and Forms University at Bradford. He then uh, took up a job in the fourth state, that's the media. And then he became uh, the news editor in Telegraph the New Indian Express, and then the Press Trust of India. And now he's the consulting editor at the Secretariat. So welcome, Mr. Jayanta Rai Chaudhary, to Heart to Heart yeah. talk with you. And we hope we can you know, take off from here. But tell me, what was your interest in yes. journalism after your father was such and uh, had an illustrious uh, career in the ICS? Were you- uh, Not the ICS, but uh, one of the allied services, actually. Uh -huh. uh, he came to Delhi uh, before partition and okay. he settled down here and of course he opted for India when partition came, you know, all officers had to opt for one or the other, Pakistan okay. or India. Oh. And he stayed on in Delhi and he saw the riots and uh, anyway, uh, I was born pretty late in his life. I came in uh, the 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a kind of therapy child for my parents because they lost their eldest son to a disease called diphtheria, which in those oh. days was quite a killer disease. Oh. Uh, but anyway, luckily for me, they didn't mollycoddle me, which helped because usually, you know, young, younger childs, childs who come late in life are mollycoddled. But I wasn't. I was allowed to be a normal boy, which really helped. I had my usual uh, fights, my scraps and my hockey, school hockey team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I actually joined uh, Hindustan Dobson Associates as a. Yes. Yes, please carry on. As a, as a management trainee, when I after my academic career was uh, on, so HTA and I was in advertising, uh, but <laughs> somehow or the other, I had a fight with my first boss, and I resigned in a half. And I sat at home for a while wondering what to do. And then came along this uh, little ad in a newspaper which said, United News of India requires some editors and please apply. Okay. So I thought uh, I had all the qualifications excepting uh, uh, typing skills, which I didn't have. I didn't know how to type. Mm -hmm. But I applied and they didn't want to know whether I could type or didn't, couldn't type. Uh, they just wanted to know whether I could write. And okay. I passed the exam, got through the interview and joined them. Yeah. Then on the very first day, I was asked to type a copy which had come from Punjab. It was horribly written and they wanted it to be totally rewritten. Uh -huh. Obviously, I couldn't type. So I was searching for A and B and C. And a lady took, who was my colleague took pity on me and took the typewriter and said, you dictate, I'll type. And she did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so then another senior person, uh, he you know the, took, again, he realized that this boy doesn't know how to type. So he had an Olivetti typewriter. These are small portable typewriters in those days, very coveted. Yes, they were yes, made, yes. So they were imported and this gentleman had one. So yes. he offered to give it to me, uh, lend it to me for a week. And uh, so that you practice and don't uh, ruin the keys by banging mm -hmm. on it. and mm -hmm. Get to know how to type. And so that, you know, if you have to go somewhere mm -hmm. on a reporting assignment, you're able to type a story at least. Mm -hmm. So that was my initiation into journalism. After that, it's been a long journey in a number of newspapers, part of Mr. Vinod Mehta's uh, launch team for the Pioneer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was a wonderful experience. I don't think I have had a boss like Vinod Mehta. I have, all my bosses have been wonderful people. You are Karl Kur in, uh, uh, in Pioneer, Vinod Mehta, afterwards A.K. Bhattacharya, 
then of course CP Kuruvilla, Sumir Kaul, all of them have been excellent people. But Vinod Mehta will always remain special to me. He was a guy who could protect his reporters uh, if he knew that they had written the right thing. Even if uh, the political bosses or the corporate honchos came against us, he would defend us. And it was a great thing. I think... Uh, Jayanta Bhai, yeah. uh, may I interject yeah. kindly reposition your phone? Okay. Is yes, that better? Uh, no, no, no. You're topsy-turvy. Now, now your... it seems to be okay. Yeah. Your bandwidth ahead, is very ahead. low. I think you'll have to put a, put your hotspot on. Yes, yeah, no, okay. okay. Let me see. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. Let, let me just do it once more. Huh? Uh, I'll take off and I'll come back. In. Okay, right. uh, let me see. Uh, your bandwidth is low, so you'll have to put it in your hotspot or you'll have to adjust your uh, thing. Is it better now? Yeah, it is correct. Okay. All right. Should I start again or should we go on from where I was? Uh, I think you can move on. We okay. can you can move on to uh, your partition area. I mean, you were originally from Bengal or from uh, West Pakistan? No, originally my father was from East Bengal, what is now Bangladesh. Okay. But he had left his house at the age of fifteen and uh, to study in Calcutta, and so most of his life has been spent in Delhi and in okay. Calcutta. He came mm -hmm. to Calcutta, I think, in nineteen thirty nine. And since then, then till he came to Delhi, he was in Calcutta was doing his uh, un undergraduation, then his postgraduation, and then he came to Delhi. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, he, there's a funny story hey, with him. Uh, he actually was born in Calcutta. Mm -hmm. His uh, Nani Hal was in Calcutta and he was born there. And my grandmother was had studied in a school called Victoria Institution in Calcutta. Oh my so God! She was uh, quite a you know uh, not exactly mm. a mem sahib, but she was quite a stickler for rules. Mm. So you had to call her up. There was no question of calling her too. Apni, apni, okay. Apni, apni. And uh, when my father was going to go to school, his village school, huh. she uh, came to Calcutta, bought him a set of you know shorts. Shirt, socks, shoes, etc., mm -hmm. and told him that you're going to wear this to school. So he wore it. The first day, everybody in the village school started laughing at him and said, Ki, Are, sahab agya, sahab agya. Uh, This guy wears, you know, boots because in the village, everybody goes to school with a nanga pair. Oh, yeah, and they used to wear dhotis. So my dad came back and said, Ki, They laugh at me, so I'm going to wear dhotis and whatever. He said, No, you're not a village yokel. You're not going to go in dhoti and nanga pair. You mm -hmm. will wear your boots, you will wear your pants and go. So dad, <laughs> being the diplomat that he was, did a compromise. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would go to some relative's house, whom he used to call Badi Amma, and uh, would uh, transfer from his you know, uh, shirt and pant to dhoti and uh, whatever. Mm -hmm and go to school. So that was uh, his schooling. But anyway, we've got a long story short, we lived in Delhi and Delhi was a wonderful city in those days. It was really a garden city, which is what it's still called, but it's hardly a garden city any longer. And uh, we had used to have these long cycle uh, rides. Uh, students used to ride our cycles to school. It was a lovely atmosphere. And uh, I think uh, Delhi in the 1970s, 70s was one of the best cities in the world. It was. It was. It was, it was indeed. And uh, working in Delhi was excellent. Uh, luckily, my job, of course, took me to a lot of places other than Delhi on reporting assignments all over the country and elsewhere also. But Delhi remains a favorite for me. And though I was posted for three years in Calcutta, uh, where my Kasura is, uh, I enjoyed it. 
I really loved Calcutta. It okay. was a wonderful city, very warm. People were very, very, very welcoming. And I learned a lot there and I did a lot of reporting there. A lot of stories on, on not only on what I used to write on politics and economics, but on culture, on social issues, etc. But still, Delhi is where my heart lies. And uh, you can say that I am a Delhi wala. And I will probably, uh, unless and until fate takes me elsewhere, I'll probably die here. Yes. <laughs> no, uh, it's it's a mitti ki pukar hoti hai na. But uh, that's extremely interesting. You said you enjoyed your tenure with Mr. Vinod uh, Mehta. Yes, in the, in the 80s or 90s. What was it? 90s. 90s. 92, to be precise, 92 to 94 end. Yes, he had taken over the Pioneer, which was yes. a very prestigious paper, I think, from UP, from Lakshaw. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, uh, he, he did very well. I, he did very well. Actually, he was a pioneering editor. I haven't seen an editor like him. Uh, and uh, I will just give a few examples of what a great man that gentleman was. Uh, you know, everybody used to say that this man can bring out a paper wonderfully, but he's not. he doesn't understand politics. So on the day Babri Masjid uh, fell, uh, Vinod Mehta wrote a front page edit, okay. which I think is one of the best editorials I've ever read in my life. Very lucid, very simply written, and uh, it gave the story so well written and so well explained, and at the same time made the pertinent comments that were required. And every every critic of his was silent in that one particular article of his. Uh, to show what kind of how strong a man he was. I'll just give you two examples. Um, you know, uh, I had done a story again about Coca-Cola having child labor in their factory. The first factory yes. they reopened in India. Yes. And all hell broke loose. Uh, Coca-Cola, uh, Top Brass came to meet Mr. Elam Thapar, who was the owner of the paper. And, you know, uh, there was a lot of pressure on us. But not a single word of it percolated down to me. I learned about it later, not from him, but from his staff, his private secretary, etc. Mm -hmm. So he bore all the pressure and saw to it that I remained protected. And I continued doing stories mm -hmm. in the areas where I was doing stories. I was not taken off any beat. So that was, I think that is, you know, that requires a kind of strength. And this is not just my story. There are many other reporters who will tell you how Vinod Mehta stuck to them, how they, he stood by them. That is what Vinod Mehta was. Vinod Mehta was a reporter's editor. He was a writer's editor. Yes, yes, yes. He was, uh, he was you know, the, he would come around, uh, he would give galleys at night if you are late with your copy or if the desk doesn't clear the pages quickly. Uh, he had the choicest of language. Uh, and in those days, newsrooms, uh, we used to use epithets. Now it's bad. Now we don't do. We are much more civilized. Mm -hmm. But Vinod was a wonderful person, and uh, I think very warm-hearted, so very very I warm. So. But was he from uh, uh, Gujarat or from Punjab? No, he was Vinod Mehta. Uh, was from he was a Lucknow boy. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> he was a Punjabi, but he was from Lucknow. Okay. And, and he was born and brought up in Lucknow. And after that, he went to England to study. And he worked in England for a long time. Uh, and then came back and he, he launched he launched the Debonair, if you remember. The yes, Debonair. yes, yes. He, that, was, that was a magazine. Yeah. It so gold, many people, you know, because he launched Debonair, they thought that he's not a political editor, but he was. After that, he launched the Sunday Observer, mm -hmm. uh, which again, at that time was quite a you know very very flashy paper very very well mm -hmm. sought after paper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then came pioneer and then outlook my life's uh, one of my greatest uh, this thing is that he offered me a job when he started uh, outlook but because i was getting married at that time and i was working for the telegraph which along with the hindu was considered to be the most stable paper in the country my parents advised that you stay on uh, don't let your wife suddenly face a position situation where you don't have you know a paper to work for. So <laughs> I didn't take the plunge. I should have. Uh, but anyway, we remain close to each other. I think he he loved me till the end, and I remain close to his family, his wife, his uh, adopted son. So uh, he was a wonderful man, and I think I have had the best of bosses. 
after that i worked uh, with sumir call in telegraph uh, anjan roy was my immediate business editor then came supu cp kurvilla and of course avik sarkar was our chief editor again both of them are excellent people and uh, again very protective of the journalists very very protective of us uh, the stories that we broke uh, could have i mean must have caused a lot of flutter in very many circles in corporate circles as well as in political circles Very but nice. they, they stood by us i still remember one story that i did that uh, during the kargil war sugar was coming from nawaz sharif's uh, relatives factories yes. to india through yes. the you know waga border yes. telegraph broke it it was front page uh, the story became you know a cause for a uh, lot of debate in parliament there was hangama mm -hmm. parliament was adjourned for two it days was, in a row yes and uh, and obviously there was must have been a lot of pressure on the editors but uh, um, i got a promotion i didn't get there was he no he took it very no, well he took it very well very very well he was very very strong uh, one particular liquor company uh, uh, filed a comp, uh, case against me for a multi crore case of defamation because i had reported on uh, something something untoward now where is he gone I think his his internet is gone. Are you back? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Okay. Is yeah. it okay? Yeah. Ah. So, yeah. All right. Should we start? Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I'm, you you wrote about the sugar lobby from Pakistan. And how sugar yeah. was imported? That's a that was yeah, that, that was a very major that was scoop. one big, really really major scoop. And I was put again. There was a lot of defense of me. Uh, I still remember Shaw Wallace was the liquor company which filed a defamation case against me, and the paper of course for having reported an income tax uh, investigation on this company. Uh, it was a multi crore defamation case, <clears throat> and I was a little scared. What will happen? Now, what did you do uh, with Shaw Wallace? Did you not imbibe their spirit? I did didn't imbibe. <laughs> <laughs> probably didn't imbibe the spirit. Uh, yeah. But this, uh, but uh, my paper stood by me. They hired the best of lawyers, uh -huh. and we fought the case out in Calcutta High Court. Uh -huh. And I think we uh, ultimately, of course, when the Shaw Wallace company was sold off, uh, the new owners dropped the case because they realized it was a futile case. and the income tax report of course existed we had shown it to the court we had shown it to the judge so now uh, the course that case actually died out but these are instances i am just quoting them just to tell you that how newspaper owners and editors can be very very protective of their reporters yeah. and uh, we, i was lucky to get such editors and get such owners yeah you are very lucky so i yes, think so so will uh, start it that uh... Unique whiskey uh, antiquity is it true? Yeah, it did. It did start in antiquity. I think also it started in another whiskey called Blender's Pride. Lot of lot of good whiskeys, but there was an income tax issue, <laughs> and we <laughs> did highlight it. So I think when it was launched, uh, there was a conference in nineteen ninety four, nineteen ninety eight, hmm. uh, and uh, I requested them. I said, yeah, "Please sponsor." So they sponsored. They were kind and to sponsor. Okay. Uh, it was an international uh, conference on uh, you know biotechnology and immunology. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I Actually, think... Shaw Wallace was into a lot of other areas besides uh, whiskey and you know, liquor. Uh -huh. uh, they had a yeast plant, I think, and they had another plant which used to make gelatin in Chandi in somewhere in Chandigarh, mm -hmm. and Mohali, if I am not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So they did have a lot of other areas of operation. Of course, Shaw Wallace used to be. also in uh, at one time into uh, cosmetics mm -hmm. but that division was one of the first to be sold off if i'm mm -hmm. not mistaken mm -hmm. but they were, they were good companies that uh... it, it was a good company it was one of the blue chip uh, british run companies at one time yes yes, yes. then uh, afterwards of course mr chabria's family bought it yeah then it was bought over by mr malias uh -huh. uh, But I think uh, what is now there in Shawal is is basically the liquor division. The rest of it has gone. Yeah. I think they were at one time even into shipping, if I am not mistaken. Yes, yes, they were, they were, they were. 
and now they are fishing kings. <laughs> <laughs> they are fishing kings. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a solid, uh, what you call a sterling company at that time. Yeah. yeah. Sterling company. And people yeah. working for Shaw Wallace was, uh, was something of pride. Shaw Wallace, Philip, or Megas. I think they were eventually taken over by the good old Marwaris. Uh, they, they were Indianized. Many of those companies became had Indian owners later. Yes. But unfortunately, uh, Chaudhary, even the Marwaris did not understand the uh, value of the, uh, what you call, sterling companies. They tried to run it their way. And what the British uh, believed in was uh, they had to, uh, whenever there was a change of guard, they said, hum dastur se chalenge. Hmm? You know, dastur, they had a, they had a thing, uh, dastur was, uh, is an Urdu word, and whosoever took over somebody's position, yeah. they said, dastur I think, uh, basically, uh, the attack. The change was brought in gradually. Yeah. Gradually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and true. Now, and now we see, we see such a, such a lot of uh, rapid changes which have no meaning and have no uh, you know depth at all yeah oh, but, uh, you don't change the management you know style of a company overnight if you do that then you risk uh, you know uh, losing that company's culture and therefore its ability to perform so that is a danger that is always there but yes, with time, changes will occur, you know, both in ownership and style of running the company. But yes, at the same time, the change should not be hastened so much that the company falls apart. Mm. So that is the uh, matter. But tell me, sir, uh, one more thing I want to ask. You that, uh, I, had, I, I had written for, the, for your pioneer a long time ago. Uh, I, I was from JNU. And I had written something on Tibet. It was a little controversial, and uh, some some people said that uh, they'll knock your ears off, they'll knock your nose off, and this and that. I said, okay, that's it. Yes. This was the ninety-two, I think, and it was uh, how the Tibetans used to treat their own people, and it was not. It was a Chinese view plus a Tibetan view. I think there was a guy from Kenya, Uke Sunil, Sunil Uke, or some guy. He's there, and uh, he was an editor. And, uh, he had taken up. Then I wrote several other articles, but it was not, uh, you know, sort of carried out. And later on, uh, I went to good old uh, AIR as, as a radio journal. Hmm. But anyhow, I I really appreciated uh, these, these papers were worth reading: the Telegraph, the Pioneer, and of course, AST and uh, DOI were there. But uh, Hindu, Pioneer, Telegraph, they were prized, uh, you know, sort of. They, they had a yes. premium at that time. They had a premium at that time compared yeah. to, you see, uh, this uh, mass, uh, uh, what you call, uh, reading of uh, with ads of HD and DOI. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't remember seeing uh, a Hindi version of Pioneer. I don't remember. They must have been. They must have been. And I think you all were you all were located in the Herald House, weren't you all? Yeah, we were located in Herald House. No, no. In my time, it was an only English paper. Mm -hmm. uh, I think later on was after I left, uh, which was in uh, the end of '94. After Vinod Mehta resigned, I also resigned, mm -hmm. and I joined Telegraph. Mm -hmm. So afterwards, I think under the new management, it uh, uh, did ultimately have a Hindi uh, uh, edition also, and uh, it was quite a. I, believe it was quite good. It was well received in uh, UP. But uh, that is it. I mean, I really don't know. But the English newspaper really went downhill afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, though they had very good editors. A.K. Bhattacharya, I think, maintained it. Then Chandan, uh, Chandan Mitra. Chandan Mitra, Chandan Mitra, yeah. Chandan Mitra took over. But Chandan, uh, by that time, you know, most of the uh, pioneer staffers had left. So he was trying to build a new team. It was always in, you know, flux, in a state of flux. You need a permanent team. You need a strong team to run a newspaper. A newspaper cannot be run by a team which is in a state of flux. And that was the main problem for the pioneer during Chandanda's time, though he was a wonderful editor, a wonderful person, and a great writer himself. 
but because <clears throat> our funds were in short supply and people were leaving all the time, yes, yes started that, going that's down. one thing. Payments were very, very low. Yeah, yeah. You wrote an article and you were paid about six months later. So the value of that article and the value of that uh, writing was just, you know, went down, plummeted down. Absolutely. And you didn't feel like picking up the pen again. Yeah. It's very important to pay your writers on time. Yes. If you don't, uh, whether it's a newspaper or a magazine or a site, it goes down. Mm. In fact, I was, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Delhi Press, for instance, though I've never worked there. So I was at one of their law found uh, this thing meetings and I, uh, they, they were telling me that even in the earliest days, uh, they always used to pay their writers not only on time, but their photographers on time, which is very important. Ah, yeah. They used to sometimes give those photographers advances, mm -hmm. though they were not their staffers, they were their, you know, uh, this thing. Because the point is that they are, yeah. photographers are in more need of funds at all times. They are, they, 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 their earnings are less. And secondly, their equipment purchases are huge. You know, they buy a lot of uh, stuff. And in those days, they used to buy the, if you remember, they used to buy the films. Without the films, you can't actually shoot anything anyway. Uh -huh. So uh, they made a point of paying them. So these guys, these freelance photographers uh -huh. used to give their best photographs to Delhi Press and not uh -huh. to Times of India or Hindustan uh -huh. Times. Uh -huh. Because Times of India and Hindustan Times would take three months to pay them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these guys would pay them and maybe in advance. Yeah. So, so, so you know, that is a very important thing. Uh, I think uh, those, anyone who's going to launch a site now, nobody's going to, very few people will launch newspapers. Uh -huh. But anyone who get, launches a TV channel or a, uh, or a website must remember that the only way to do business is to see to it that the huge army of stringers that you have, yeah. and of uh, edit writers that you have, uh -huh. are paid on time so that you can retain talent. Yes, I, I, I told Mr. Kutari of uh, Rotomac Pen, uh, sometime I should write for him. He had, you know, he started something parallel to uh, Archie cards. Archie's were uh, very popular at one time. You know, the Archie shops? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So I've written some uh, uh, beautiful things for him on mother, father, their, you know, for his cards, uh, greeting cards. And uh, he kept praising me, kept praising me. Then one day I said, okay. Uh, in those days, we didn't have email. We had fax. Mm. Fax, fax, you know. Correct. So I did say that, uh, look, sir, uh, uh, money is like the six cents, without which the five others do not flood. Mm. So, 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 huh? so, very true. After that, I didn't get a, you know, Call. <laughs> 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 so that's uh, that's where where you say that. Uh, yeah. I mean, it feeds you. It feeds it feeds your. Well, you spoke uh, like mind. a Shah, and so you did the right thing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do not know whether Rotomax still continues with the pills are still available, but uh, what Kothari was, but he was. Uh, he just vanished and I also vanished. But I kept on writing. I kept on writing. And uh, I uh, haven't had publication done. Then I uh, sort of uh, wrote a book, which was uh, which I drew by myself uh, overnight. It was called Light Swami. Oh, that's nice. Very interesting. Light Swami. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't get somebody to publish it. I mean, it was, it was a kind of a character, you know, bulb. Hmm? Uh, and a spindly bulb with, uh, uh, you know, this vermilion paste, pointed tikka, uh, mm -hmm. and say that uh, you should pass remarks that Maya ki kaya you know, Maya, uh -huh. Maya ki kaya, huh? and uh, you know, it, I still have that book, but uh, it was I had to go to the BSF, a friend of mine in the BSF. Mm -hmm. Said I'll have it, uh, uh, not photocopied for you, photocopied. So oh. he had it photocopied, and then I just had copies, and I, it was all handwritten. There was nothing, you know. It was written with a blue pen, blue, blue felt pen, what you mm -hmm. call sketch pen. Now we call sketch felt pen. Yeah, but, uh, it's one or two copies still exist. 
but it had its own, uh, you know, uh, charm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. And I think those were the times when uh, the, uh, Rajiv Gandhi or somebody and uh, a lot of uh, things were, you know, up and down. So I didn't, I didn't get any. But yes, I was interviewed by the pioneer. Yes. Pioneer. That's nice. That's very good. A yeah. pioneer or, or, and the COI for this. And they yeah. asked me why you wrote this. I said, because there's uh, uh, such a lot of mess uh, going on at, uh, in the politics. I mean, you don't know what, what's happening, what's not happening. Huh? Yeah. And 9-11 had also struck, uh, struck at that time. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, the yearn, yearning for learning is always there. And it will always be there. And I mean, I'm so glad I met you, Fred. We have such so many common interests. Then I had friends in the uh, fourth state. One of them was uh, a robust uh, Sadar who passed away recently. Harpal Singh Bedi. Harpal Singh Bedi was my senior in UNI, a fantastic guy. Yes. Of course, he used a lot of four-letter words, but that is that is mm. Harpal. And mm -hmm. Harpal was a wonderful guy and had so many anecdotes about so many sportsmen. Mm. He was a he was he was a you know real buddy. He was a real yes. Yeah. And we studied in the same university, JNU. Okay. Oh yes, of course. Harpal is from JNU. His wife is also from JNU. They were yeah. 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 She's from South India, I believe. Yeah, yeah, she's from South India, uh, but they had a, I think they had a wonderful marriage and yes, they, yes, they really, well. really, uh, they were really in love with each other. Too. He was a very good soul, very, very good, very soul. nice soul, very nice. And person. Then, uh, we had uh, other people also. Uh, uh, there was in you and I. There was Sujata Deb. Sujata Deb was my senior again uh, by a few years. Wonderful lady. She's uh -huh. uh, trying to do something in Tripura now. Uh, she had rung me up a few days back. I said she's back there. Uh, she's back in Delhi, but she's trying to do something in Tripura. So whatever. Yeah. But she's originally from Tripura, I think. Yeah, she's originally. Uh, our, our, I think her father is from Tripura. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then uh, we were in the same class uh, of uh, MAFIF. Okay, okay. And then we we, we met uh, several times, but uh, somehow uh, we uh, drifted apart. I mean, she 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 was in love with the media, and I was in love with my work. So uh, after that, we just couldn't find way where she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though AIR is very was very near the UNI, and at night I still remember we used to walk across to go to your canteen, tea, for tea. And tea and right. omelets. Yeah, and we used mm. to meet all those interesting characters who used to read the news in French or uh, mm -hmm. uh, Tibetan, etc., uh, etc. Et and uh, they were uh, for us. I mean, for someone who. Never met mm. someone who spoke French or Tibetan or uh, mm. Myanmar is Burmese to be precise. Yeah, uh, yes. this was really interesting. Yeah, it was. It was that UNIT was excellent. Excellent. Yeah. It so was your AIT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. At that, uh, right in the front. But so, now UNI has changed, and so has PTI, and uh, one fears to step into AIR. You know, but uh, it was it was a friendly, very friendly building. Yeah. Now there's some kind something. Uh, uh, you know. The new building is not. Uh, it's it's kind of you know it's different. Yeah. The old building had its own charms. And yes. Of course, yes. The canteen you had, which you used to work in the night, the XP canteen, external whatever services canteen, was uh, was I think quite quite nice. It was it had a very cozy atmosphere. Yes. So uh, also uh, in the nineties, I started broadcasting for AIR. They used yeah. to take something called the spotlight. So initially, I used to write it and uh, mail it across to them or have yeah. it sent across to someone. Uh -huh. So this gentleman who used to take it said, you know, we have been told that instead of a newsreader reading it, writer reads it, it'll be better. Uh -huh. I said, okay, I'm very happy to do it. So I uh, strolled across and uh, did it. Uh -huh. And the gentleman thought, uh, said, Ki, you look much younger than what you write. So I said, okay, that's even better. That's a nice compliment. So after that uh, came the Gulf War, if you remember. And uh, for some reason, they started calling me for news analysis in the morning. Yeah. Hours. So I would be woken up in the morning and there would be a cast meeting outside. I would go and there used to be a, a major general, I forget his name, uh, retire, a major general, retired major general, Sardarji, mm -hmm. who was part of the Indian mission, which had trained the Iraqi army at some stage. <laughs> so he and I were uh, pitted into the same newsroom to discuss <clears throat> news and most of the news of course was the war the Iraq 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Gulf the War. Operation so, Desert Storm, what was that? Desert time? Storm. And we were discussing those stories. Uh, every newspaper was full of it. Mm. Uh, and of course, uh, he he's predicted that the Iraqi army, uh, if it comes to a face-to-face -face fight, the Iraqi army would actually do better. Mm. But uh, we all know what happened. Uh, the, the army never got a chance to do a face-to-face -face fight. Mm -hmm. It was all uh, bombardments by the American, uh, by the, mm -hmm. uh, the Allied troops, which mm -hmm. finished off Iraq. Yes, so yes. that was an interesting thing. After that came something called uh, Market Mantra, yes. uh, which AI started. And uh, I was originally an economics man. So Anindo Shengupto, who was the PEX, uh, not the PEX, he was uh, the, the news editor who started it. Uh -huh. He was from the information service. Okay. Uh, he contacted me through a friend of mine, schoolmate of mine called Shubhamaya Bhattacharya, who's an economist. Okay. He also writes for Business Standard. Okay. So Onindo contacted me and I became a regular on Market Mantra. I used to be called on Saturdays or Sundays, uh -huh. basically on days when there would be uh, live questions, phone-in questions. My God. And I did that for almost two decades and it was part of me. And I still remember I had taken an auto uh, from our IT office where, Pete, where uh, Telegraph was working at that time, I took an auto to go somewhere. And I told the auto wala that uh, I'll pay you extra. You have to take me back to, oh, it was a cabinet meeting. I was covering some cabinet meeting. Mm -hmm. So I said, can you take me back? I'll pay you extra. He said, okay, sir, I'll wait for you. Mm -hmm. So as we were going back, he said, you know, I've been thinking, where have I met you? Mm -hmm. And I said, but have you met? He said, no, I realized I haven't met you, but I've heard you. I said, what, where? So he said, uh, mein aate ho, aap ek market mantra bol pe ek program hai, usme aap yes. bolte ho. So, you know, that was a fantastic thing for me. I mean, an auto driver telling me that he has heard me on market mantra. Uh, so I went back and told Anindo. Anindo became a lifelong friend for me. You and feel like, you feel so nice with that tinge of yeah, like yeah. That was a very 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 nice warm gesture yeah. on his part. And it, I was it, also very happy it, because we were thinking who because the listenership was there. It was a huge listenership, yeah. but we didn't know which strata it came from. So apparently, it came from all stratas because the Maruti's uh, you know vice president would also be listening to it. And in fact, Maruti gave an ad to Holiday Radio mm -hmm. because uh, they had heard us discussing automobiles mm -hmm. on that program. Uh, but uh, the thing is, it's all stratas. Everybody was listening to that program. That was mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. And Onindo, of course, is doing something else. He's writing books now. He was from... Ah, yeah, I think there's something. Uh, anyhow, but uh, tell me something. Now, uh, we've discussed so much. Who was your favorite uh, theater actor yeah. in Delhi? Theater actor. Uh, this past, friends in my friends. Some I mean, of my Delhi has a lot of theatre. I don't know. It has. Yeah. It, of late, it has it just the theatre has just gone off. Help me. Hmm? Hello. Hello. Kyle? Yes, yes. Yeah, I can. Here? I can hear you, Mr. Chaudhary. Uh, who was your favorite theatre actor? I mean, you had you had Apex next to you. You had Kamini, uh, Kamini Auditorium. Then you had some so many Ravindra, Ragshala, so many things, other things. But did you did you ever go into to watch theater? We used to watch movies. Uh, Have you come? Yeah. Yeah. So who was your first? Am theater? I okay? Am theater. I... theater, theater actor, theater. I mean, Delhi, had, Delhi was the house of theater, sir. Besides Bombay, Delhi had a lot of good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who eventually, like Nasiruddin, went to Bombay. Bansi Call, of course, he was a director in NFBA, uh, uh, School of uh, Drama, and us. Uh, and then you had uh, Babbar, Raj Babbar, you also had uh, Om Puri, all that. But did you watch any of their plays? Yes, yes. I, I was, uh, though I was not an actor myself, but I used to watch a lot of plays. And 
of course mandi house was a favorite uh, area mm-hmm. for me shiram uh, center and uh, you know lalit uh, kala academy all those theaters i used to go to all those places watch a lot of uh, theater a lot of my friends were actually actors and actresses mm-hmm. so and also dance in i used to have a lot of friends amongst dancers in delhi mm-hmm. uh, shiram uh, reporter if you remember they do, do that ram leela yeah uh-huh. shiram uh, shiram center as yeah. a ram leela Uh-huh. so which is a dance drama it is not you know in that drama leela format but is a dance drama form yeah, yeah. so a lot of those actors and actresses or rather the dancers uh-huh. i used to know them and both the men and the women uh-huh. and um, it's it's a different world it's a very cultured world it's absolutely, a different very, absolutely. very happy happy yeah. world so uh, of course delhi's cultural world was in mandi house and i hope it remains there mm-hmm. though it is diffused now there are a lot of, a lot of other centers which have grown up where you well uh, i think the kab- kebabs have also disappeared from mandi out now <laughs> yeah <laughs> that Shamikam. kebab uh, in that uh, place in that shivam center triveni, gone, triveni, but, triveni. Yeah, triveni triveni has gone yes, but, yes, yes. Uh, yeah but still it's good it's a good place to hang out it's a good place to meet friends uh, uh, uh. yeah i mean <laughs> the chai and the you know paratha are quite nice yeah yeah parathas of course um, uh, the best parathas were in ito uh, mm-hmm. sardar's parathas anda yeah, parathas yeah, yeah, were very good yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, when we used to go back home at 2 in the night after working mm-hmm. we would sometimes step by at nizamuddin uh-huh. uh, there were these two kebab cheese uh, one was a uh, was someone from uh, i think from uh, afghanistan uh, uh-huh. pathan man not uh-huh. afghanistan he was a pathan basically uh-huh. from uh-huh. Uh-huh. who used to make these wonderful lightly spiced kebabs and next door was a bihari bengali uh, dukan mm-hmm. which used to make uh, heavily spiced uh, kebabs mm-hmm. so they were a contrast mm-hmm. you had one you wanted the other also <laughs> <laughs> so, and then there was mulchan paratha wala yes 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 aloo yes. paratha with a dollop of you know butter mm-hmm. Uh, 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 uh. so night life in delhi meant you know didn't um, so wasn't that, that, like that, those were those were uh, <laughs> those were the days. times those were simple yeah. times simple and times they yes. had a lot of character and weight yes indeed indeed, indeed which we which we right. cannot uh, draw out from swiggy and zomato no no you can't get it and uh, <laughs> there was a lot of camaraderie camaraderie in fact i remember we would uh, uh, see to it that of uh, women colleagues uh, got dropped first Uh, that uh, we would see we we would wait with our you know car or our motorcycle to see that they had rung their bell and actually the door had opened and they were inside then only we would leave we would not you know leave before that mm-hmm. so that they are safe so so we hear a lot of things about women safety now but i remember even in the 1990s we used to in, in try and ensure that our colleagues are safe Yeah, and, uh, yeah, which was which was there was a lot of camaraderie. No, even even the auto guys were quite safe at that. No, right? very very no. much better behaved than very, uh, what you get now. But what, yeah. uh, but other than that, also we used to you know we used to ensure because Delhi there is always a uh, there is a there is a you know there is one part of Delhi which is not that great. Uh-huh. So, uh, but uh, there was a lot of newsroom banter, a lot of friendship, a lot of fun, a lot of parties. Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of uh, you know life as such uh-huh. in the press club or outside uh-huh. in people's homes uh-huh. so it was it was a fun time growing up in delhi fun time working in delhi yeah, and yeah. i hope uh, the new generation has the same fun i that- do not know i i think they the, the digital media and the digital uh, press has uh, confined itself to the ac the air conditioned uh, kind of atmosphere i think what has broken up a lot of you know human relationship is the long covid period uh, you see people who came to work uh-huh. during the covid or after the covid they didn't get that uh, bone homey that they got in a news room mm-hmm. they they were working out of homes and now they are actually ma- some of them are not so adjusted uh, to a place where they work together they party together they adda together and they you know laugh together so they are trying to learn those skills that we learned at a very young age not skills i would say the fun that we had they're trying to learn it so that's the difference i think they are not different from us they are the same people but it's just that the long covid the 3 years when people were allowed to work from home has uh, you know has it had its effect 
on social life as such and on work ethics and on work dynamics so but it will come back to normalcy yeah, over time that's that's but that's the way the world functions and i'm sure yes history does repeat itself but uh, as you said you cannot repeat the past uh, this was something which uh, i learned. I remember from the uh, movie The Great Gatsby. Did you see that movie? Which one? The Great Gatsby. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a great yeah. movie. Yes, uh, that's a lovely Robert Redford and I think yeah. Julia Roberts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, theater. I mean, theater was there. Then the cinema halls also had their own uh, atmosphere. Charm and aura. Yes, indeed. Um, yes. And, uh, I still remember watching movies for sixty-five paise, and right. uh, you had to crane your head. That was in Kamal Cinema, uh, front row, uh, sixty-five paise, ten commandments, and my I had a neck crick in crick in my neck because uh -huh. I was watching uh, Charles Heston, you know, do whatever he was doing on uh -huh. screen, and it was a panorama screen, seventy mm, so my head would roll from one side to other, trying oh. to see what was happening, <laughs> how the commandments were being. Tell me, sixty-five paise was a princely amount. Yeah, it was. You actually say I used to, you know, because I. Uh, didn't want to trouble my dad. I used to do tuitions in college, mm. and that is how I used to earn some hundred bucks or so a month. And uh, that much of it used to go in, you know, uh, either nurulas or at uh, in watching movies. So, <laughs> to, <laughs> so in the beginning of the month, it would be three forty for mm. dress circle. Mm. End of the month, it would be sixty five paise front mm. row seat with the less of the high polloi. <laughs> <laughs> But tell me now, with the current, uh, uh, you know. The scenario has changed. Huh? The digital media is uh, supreme in everything. You know, YouTube has taken over. Up, you and I on YouTube has taken over, taken uh, you know, very big leap and jump in, uh, you know, projecting people's uh, habits, people's feelings, people's views, and even cookery shows, which uh, used to used to be done, uh, you know, personally and in the open face to face. Where they used to get the sights and the uh, sights of the vegetables or the or the beets and the smells, and uh, you know, I mean, it was something. Uh, and they used to remember, but now everything is on video. So uh, 